The Audi R8 Le Mans prototype was one of the most successful prototype sports cars of all time, and the racer that kicked off Audi's decade and a half dominance of the top echelon of global endurance racing. It reigned supreme for six seasons before the sport's governing bodies finally regulated it into obsolescence, and Audi debuted their replacement, the R10 TDI. The R8 was not, however, Audi's first attempt at an entry into the burgeoning LMP class in the late 1990s and early 2000s. It was born directly from one of the two 1999 programs intended to explore different development paths within the contemporaneous rule sets. The R8R and R8C took divergent aerodynamic paths while sharing the majority of their drivetrain components, centered around a 600 horsepower, 3.6 liter twin turbo V8. The R8R had a longer and more involved development period, and as such was the more robust and balanced of the two vehicles, despite the R8C's superior top speed and superior aesthetics. The R8C could achieve 350 km an hour down the Mulsanne Strait, whereas the R8R could achieve only about 335. The 1999 season revealed pace issues for both cars, but the R8Rs demonstrated a reliability for which Audi's prototypes would become well known outlasting most of their competitors at Le Mans to finish 3rd and 4th overall, despite qualifying in 9th and 11th. The R8Cs, like several of the other prototypes of the era, developed aerodynamic peccadillos at high speed, and while they did not find themselves in need of VFR clearance at some point in the race, like their competitors from Mercedes and BMW, an unintended pressure differential underneath the engine cover caused said covers to part company in search of, literally in some cases, greener pastures, or perhaps a reticent fan. The R8R was chosen for further development, and the 2000 season saw the debut of the new R8 LMP, intended to compete in both the European and American Le Mans Series championships. Powered by an improved version of the 3.6 liter V8 from the R8R and R8C, now featuring stratified fuel injection and putting out about 640 horsepower, it sent its power to the rear wheels through a six-speed sequential gearbox with, which obviated the need for a clutch pedal. However, while the engine was highly regarded for its reliability and power, the truly brilliant innovation that ensured the R8's long-held position at the top of the podium for six seasons was an unprecedented level of modularity. There is no more strenuous test of a vehicle's reliability than six, eight, 12, or 24 hours of in the words of Richard Hammond, the ultimate crucible of excellence, motorsport. For anything on four wheels, this is the white heat of the anvil of the spearhead of evolution. If you want to improve the breed, you go motorsport. Second is the first of the losers. You have to win to win, etc., etc. And in acknowledgement of this, the R8 was designed to minimize time spent in the pits repairing or replacing broken parts. The most notable instance of this came when Yost Racing was able to change an entire rear transaxle during the 2000 Le Mans race in less than four minutes, a job that previously took several hours. Despite rule changes eliminating the more significant opportunities to take advantage of this modularity, it did not fully destroy the advantage, and the philosophy that inspired the design proliferated across the professional paddock further increasing the intense competition that has become de rigueur in endurance races in the last 20 years. In its first outing at the 12 Hours of Sebring, R8s took first and second place, besting the previous year's victors, BMW, setting a new distance record for that track layout, and kicking off the first of eight straight victories for Audi at the Florida track. It would go on to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans that year, and in subsequent years, until its replacement debuted in 2006, with the exception of 2003, when a duo of Bentley Speed 8s, with an engine, transmission, and chassis strongly derived from the R8C, and run by Team Yost personnel and drivers, led almost the entire race, taking first and second place at the Circuit de la Sarthe. The R8 saw success with privateer teams as well, including podium finishes and wins for the ADT Champion Racing Team in 2003, 2004, and 2005. The ACO continued to place increasing restrictions on the R8 in an effort to break its dominance, and by 2005, smaller air restrictors had cost around 90 horsepower from its original spec, and added ballast further harmed its overall performance. The maturity of the design helped it to win the final victory at Lasarth. Coincidentally, Tom Christensen's sixth consecutive win and seventh overall, breaking Jackie X's record. This time it was replaced by the R10, 
It had racked up 63 wins from 79 race starts, while taking pole position 47 times, a sterling win start record of 80. Several of the 16 R8s constructed are in private hands, and occasionally campaign at historic racing events in both the U.S. and Europe, including at Sebring, Road Atlanta, Laguna Seca, and at the Le Mans Classic.